Hey all, I wanted to thank you again for listening. Please take a moment to go on the Patreon if you want more information and discussion than you get in the aired podcast. I'm taking a break for the winter and will be working on episodes for next year. If you want early content, I will make episodes available on the Patreon as soon as I complete them before their publish date in 2025. I already have a few good episodes on there from Better Know Your Practice Act, some colic discussions, an episode on long-acting injectables, and an episode about low-cost spay-neuter clinics and shopping local. Join the Patreon to take a listen. I hope this year you have gained some perspective on vet medicine and how animals and veterinarians interact with the world. I am very grateful to all the people who came on the show, and I am also very grateful for the discussions we had. I know I enjoyed them and learned to become a better person from them. If you want to be on the show, reach out over the break. If you have discussion points you would like to hear me talk about, reach out and let me know what you would like to hear. Episodes will start posting to the public February 2025, but remember, earlier on the Patreon. Signing up for just a month on the Patreon, getting all the content you want, lets me know you want to hear more. I like talking into the void, but I like seeing that people appreciate the discussions. Before the close this season, I wanted to talk about one last important thing. I feel I have to because I don't want to look back and feel I should have done more where I could on this topic. Politics is never far from veterinary medicine. Animals are too close to our lives to not be intertwined in politics because politics affects what happens and how we live our daily life. We all feel the turmoil of the approaching election and if you have been trusting my perspective for veterinary subjects, I hope you can trust my perspective with politics. While I hesitate to bring such a potentially flammable subject onto the podcast, I think it's important because our government and its running affects our daily lives and thus our animals. Please follow my line of thought on why I consider this election so important for the American people. Our government is made by all the people and for all the people. It is above party or individual. It's meant to unite the people and help grow individual people into a nation. That nation is made stronger with everyone working together. Government is the tool allowing us to make our society better than we could individually. As FDR said, it allows us to work together in the hope that democracy should concern itself also with the things as they ought to be. Americans demand, because of our discontent of the status quo, a government that raises our standards. We want better for us and those around us. While we want a government that doesn't get in our way, in order to elevate the nation as a whole and elevate the individual, we all are required to sacrifice and submit to the rules that make sure we cannot have an unfair advantage over others. That sacrifice is through taxes we pay, serving the country and the armed forces, the votes we make, the public offices we hold, and our support of the justice system, and when it comes down to it, just doing the right thing in our day-to-day lives. Our sacrifice to the group gives us as the individual the best chance to be better than what we were before. As a country, we have prospered and worked to create something stronger and better than the noble foundations we began with. Through constant vigilance, our constitution and government is at least three-fifths better than when it was created. We realize to acquire a more perfect union, we have sacrificed. Tireless persistence of long hours, yes, even bloodshed. We realize, though sometimes are not willing to accept, that it is up to each of us to maintain that constant vigilance, to maintain and improve our country by working together through being active and respectful to our government and, more importantly, each other. At this time, it's safe to say the government is not functioning as intended. Washington warned us of partisan politics and the end point of destruction which we have so far staved off has come to near tragedy of destruction of our republic, as evidenced on January 6th. As a people, we have to trust. 
while working to make our system of government function. When we lose trust and take no action to fix it, it all falls apart. Now there is no trust with the legislative branch, which has been entirely partisan and unproductive. It bends to the small percent of those with wealth and affluence, which buys the attention of each party, ensuring loyalty to faction rather than country. Our faith in the judicial branch has been shattered due to either partisan loyalty or extreme lethargy to act. It seems powerless and has shirked its responsibility to make decisions, and when it does act, has made questionably partisan decisions. We question their motives and thus lose faith in justice, which is all they have to ensure their ability to provide their portion of checks and balances. The executive branch is going to be run, regardless of the outcome of this election, by someone half the nation may not trust. What do we have left? Faith in the process of elections and that the average of leaders will bring a better country? I'm not sure we have that. A good portion of the population doesn't believe the results of the last election, and another portion isn't certain it will matter this time. We have to work to change this lack of faith. As Americans, we cannot be as prosperous as we should be. We cannot lead the lives we deserve if we see our government as broken as I have described. This is a chastisement to all our leaders. I doubt any American would argue that there are severe systemic problems with our government because of problems arising from the people in our elected offices shirking their duties and their inability to sacrifice for the people they serve. Leaders in power like staying in power, and they stay in power by causing dissent and keeping us divided. Divided, we will ask our politicians to fight for that which divides us, tearing us apart, which means those leaders will have to stay in office, because they are obviously the only fix to our dissent. And that is not what we need to succeed. As people, we want to focus on providing for our family. We have bills to pay, roofs to fix, pets to take care of, crops to grow, relationships to mend, addictions to break, and dreams to achieve. I want to focus on running my business and being a better veterinarian so I can come home to my wife and live the life we desire. I want to focus on growing my community and creating a better place in this world. And I do that. We all do that. But when our focus is distracted by our leaders unable to do their jobs, we have to focus on their inefficiencies instead of our lives. The stresses compile and we get more frustrated because the world doesn't seem to be working and it starts to collapse in on us. We cannot carry the burden alone. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a community to raise a village. It takes a community to make a nation. It takes a functioning government to let our village survive. Our government can't function if the communities are broken by the individuals focusing on survival because of a malfunctioning government. If I'm busy worrying about revolution because of government oppression, I can't focus on protecting my family, much less providing better medical care for my patients. Thomas Jefferson wanted a revolution in each generation. Why? To renew and revive the government. The Constitution is our supreme law of the land. Yet we know that document can and should grow with time just as our country should. The founders knew they needed a core charter between people and the government that would be unchanging yet adaptable. Our country and its charter was a grand experiment. As Washington said, the Constitution was imperfect, and as Jefferson inferred, it was up to new generations to improve and update it. Each generation would sacrifice to make the Constitution and the country better for the next. Sometimes we are called to hold it together and defend it. The stresses of the Civil War fractured our country and we are still mending those wounds that actually formed from a crack at the formation of our country. How do we serve our country and prove we are Americans when the threat comes from domestic rather than foreign threats? We've tried by war, so I think now we should peacefully work through discord. If at this election we peacefully achieve our goals, we then must work for better results at the next election. 
But guess what? We all don't agree what a better future is. And because my better future isn't your better future, we have to come to compromises. That's why we all need to vote to make our voice heard. That's why we all need to register so we can vote and vote in this election. We are losing faith in the system. It's on life support right now. We don't trust our government or how it functions. Everything our forefathers have built comes down to us now. And we don't trust what our government has become. If we don't actively take part in this system and make it function how we want, so what so many have fought and died for will be lost. This is important. For those of you who don't vote, shame on you. Shame. This is important. Register, sign up, and vote. It's important because a Marine died in the Pacific for you to be able to make this system better. It's important because a farmer worked his whole life in the depression to survive so his children could have a better life. You discredit them with your inaction and yourself. Our government helps us live in our day-to-day -day lives. For those of you who vote, we are divided. Almost near that of a revolution. Everyone will not be happy with this election result. But we have to realize we don't always get what we want and our country is still being formed. We as citizens have to sacrifice just as those who fight America's war abroad have to. And if we don't like the results, keep working day in and day out to make this country better. You have to vote for who you want to be president and the direction you want this country to go. That hasn't changed since the first election we held. But with this election, you need to realize what you are voting for. We are two at each other's throats and have lost sight of that. I don't blame you for wanting to vote for one candidate or the other, or wanting to have another candidate in the mix. That is your right to be able to vote for whomever you want. I don't want to take that from you. We have to use the votes and accept what people vote for and not turn to violence. For when that happens, we can only meet violence with violence. I warn you all that you need to realize what you are voting for this election so our state does not become violent. I realize that so many people who have become so partisan feel they are doing what is right to save the country they love. And I don't think either faction truly doesn't have good aspirations for the future. I understand their passion in defending their position. And here is the problem. It's with Trump and those supporting him thinking that he will fix the system. They believe they are doing right because they think he will do right. He will not. And he will make it so the system will be broken where justice and the right way of things could elude us for many traumas and bloodsheds to come. My hope it is that he has fooled his supporters to take advantage of their just passions and frustrations of the current State of the Union into serving his lawlessness rather than democracy. Democracy is being equal under the law, and not laws applied only to enemies. In my lifetime, I can't remember a politician with such a following of demagoguery and idolism. I want to hate Trump supporters for being fooled. I do and I don't. Because I so fervently and passionately believe in general his supporters want a better future. I grew up in Kentucky. Many of his supporters are my friends and family, and they taught me the ethics that make me so fervently fight Trump. I can't hate them for that. I may fault their current logic, excluding the ex extremist, which is true on the right and the left but I don't fault their patriotism. This election has been framed as us versus them. We are all American whether we lean liberal or conservative and we will be each other's neighbors after the election. I don't like Trump. Under his administration, most of the goals for the country I wanted were not progressed. I think he handled a true emergency, COVID, so poorly it resulted in the untimely death of many. My tax burdens were worse under his administration than Biden's. I had to shut down a second business, in part because of his red tape that made operating the, that business impractical. 
I felt he worked with enemies versus allies on the national stage, and I know he did not support the peaceful transition of power in our country, which leads to my fears of Trump that are not just policy-based worries. While both sides have extremists, I think conservative extremists are using Trump, who doesn't truly care about their values, to change the system, to destroy democracy, to make their values law above others' values. This is evidenced by those surrounding the Project 2025 goals. Trump is a gateway for extremism. I oppose extremism liberally or conservatively, but at this point, Trump is a gateway for conservative extremism. Trump is extreme, almost feudal. When you come down to it, there's little difference between the feudal system and the fascist system. If you believe in one, you lean on the other. Trump thrives on division, which is unnecessary. Harris speaks as one trying to unite us. If, like Trump, you have to tear down fellow Americans to lead us, those actions should not receive our praise through votes. Most important, Trump has stated publicly at multiple times many things he wants to accomplish. They are often dismissed as extreme or jokes. History should warn us not to dismiss people's exclamations. While Trump, though is a fascist, is not Hitler. Both of these fascists said what they were going to do. One has not had the chance to follow through to worse machinations. Should we be surprised if Trump follows through with his words? Will his weird racist rhetoric stop when he becomes president or get worse? Trump said he will be a dictator for just day one. I don't know anyone who has given up such powers after day one. He is followed by saying that if his supporters vote this time, they won't have to vote again. While his supporters are okay with that being a joke, he followed that statement by posting videos signaling Trump terms forever. Just hearing someone for office say that goes against everything I believe and has been taught is American. This must be challenged and fought, for this is the enemy of America. If that's what you want, value veiling fascism, you can vote for it. America is, as we said, yet unwritten, and our future is allowed to be determined by peaceful votes. That's the right given to you by those that died fighting Hitler and King George III. But please realize that's my fear, and many other people's fear, that if this vote is lost to Trump, we won't have another real vote. That's why we are passionate. If you truly think the Constitution wanted someone claiming to want to be a dictator, or want to America to become a dictator state, then that is your right to vote that way. But realize that those of us that vote against Trump are passionate because we love our country too, and we believe in upholding the same constitution which Trump has said should be terminated for his benefit. He is the reason we are not trusting government. That's why we don't understand those voting for Trump. It cannot compute in our minds someone wanting to be a dictator could possibly be someone who held the same job as Washington Adams. Jefferson or Roosevelt. It's not every generation that has its fundamentals tested. It's every person, every day, and every action. We are all being tested right now. I can't walk into surgery on a patient saying that because I completed the last surgery well, I will complete this surgery well. The same as I can't say my ancestors completed surgery well, so I will complete this surgery well. No. Surgery is unique and individual, and its outcome has consequences. Democracies are unique, and this one's outcome will be determined by your actions today. The government of the United States refuses to forget that the Bill of Rights was put into the Constitution not only to protect minorities against intolerance of majorities, but to protect majorities against the enthronement of minorities. Most of us are just trying to survive. We aren't in the 1%, we are in the 99, and very likely always will be. And the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, except in the eyes of the 1%. The current 1% is dividing the 99. 
We're fighting against each other because we became zealotous in our ideas and feel we have to fight for those ideas because that is the duty of good Americans. Then we became divided. Americans went without pay and shoes in the frozen winters of Valley Forge. Americans came together and stopped fascism from sweeping the world in World War II. Americans looked to the moon and landed on it. We did this united. We did this over generations. What truly makes us not American is when we are not working together. My plea is we do not elect Trump on November 5th. Then on November 6th, we work on the next issue to fix, because we have a lot of them. We have to fix each body of government, and we have many issues that need addressing. I can't stop you from voting for Trump, that's your right. Vote your conscience. But I have one request, one plea. If you trust my wisdom as a friend, a family member, or as a fellow patriot, consider holding to your beliefs by voting for another Republican besides Trump or an independent candidate. Your action shows you want your conservative values, but you understand the fears, which I think you have to admit are justifiable, of your fellow citizens and you respect them. This is the first step of working with each other to make a better country after the election. If we can move past Trump, we can then see that there is still a large part of the nation that holds to conservative values which must be fairly respected. And whether you are a Republican whose party has been hijacked by extremists or a Democrat who isn't holding true to democratic ideas, we all need to self-evaluate and then use our actions to make America's ours again, taking it back from the extremism that keeps the average person from surviving. If we can keep Trump out of office, we have a good precedent at each following election of holding our leaders to account and reforming and revolutionizing the country. For we have problems and we need both conservative and liberal solutions. However, if we cannot keep Trump out of office, our grand experiment will have failed and I do not believe we will have a chance to fix those problems. We will see a slow degradation of American society. Make your vote count for democracy in our republic. Give it a chance to survive. That's where I am. I am personally excited because I will be voting for Harris and Walls. They have given me an excitement I have never felt in voting before, which is accentuated by the fact they are running against a ticket that will destroy the democracy I love. Harrison Walls will allow us a chance to work together to continue to build this country. And this speech is my apology for the fights I have had and will have with friends and family. I just want the future to be better for us all. I don't hate you for wanting to vote for the ideals that you think Trump stands for. It's voting for what Trump actually stands for that I just don't understand. But after a peaceful election, I will work with you to fix and grow our country, recognizing we all feel there are issues that need addressed. I will always fight Trump and extremism. That may require me to stand passionately against you, but it will always be attempting to work on the next issue to continue to grow to make us better than we were. I'm Dr. Nathan. I'm an American trying to survive in this world. I'm going to be friends with Republicans and Democrats, but I'm not going to lose what makes this country strong, my relationships with family and friends. What Trump represents, I will fight until I die. And if the country follows Trump, I know my boundaries because friends and family are what is important to me. I'll make mistakes and probably have a few more conflicts in my future. But I'll get better and work to make the country better in hopes that maybe the next generation will have it easier and maybe can focus a little more on caring for the animals, doing their jobs, and enjoying time with their family. I ask for your sake and the country's sake to not vote for Trump. And if you can't vote for Harrison Walls like I'm doing, write someone's name in. I am proud that my vote will be for Harris and where she is promising to lead us in unity. I'm not going back to the Trump years. 
God bless America. God bless us at our homes and our work. May we all take just a little thought to make things just a bit better in the world so we can continue to create a country and world where we all have the best lives because the government we have forged protects our freedom of worship, freedom of speech, freedom from want, and freedom from fear.